In this video, I'm going to be drawing this scene of these three houses uh, here in Murano. And it's kind of similar to one that I've done before, but the difference is I'm going to do this one a little bit faster and in a slightly different style where I try not to lift my pen from the paper all too much. So uh, let's see how quick we can get this one in. Hopefully we can try and do it within about, oh, let's, let's aim for perhaps, you know, 20 minutes or so. So just put in the bottom part where the houses kind of finish off right down here. Now what I'm going to do is really just simplify down. I know we've got a house over here and we've just got to mark out where they kind of finish. So we've got one that may come up around here. I've got a second one. It's actually a fair bit of room to put these in actually. So um, let's have a look. I think also the the um, photograph that we've got, it is a tiny bit, uh, I think also with the photograph that it is compressed a little bit, it's not as wide as this bit of paper. So in a last minute decision, what I'm going to do is just uh, draw a frame, a little frame around it, and this could be, um, you know, nice as well stylistically. So just go ahead and put a bit of a frame around the edge like that. Fantastic. And then now what I'm going to do is just sort of just try to separate out the sides of the building. So we're going to have one around about here. Okay. And I'll bring this all the way down to there. Just hit the ground like that. And the rooftop's going to come up like this, come down on that side like that. Okay, then we've got a bit of that other side of the, the building here on the left. Um, here, which also has a bit of this part of the roof attached to as well. So, um, and a bit of shade, of course. So that's going to be part of this other next building to the left, which we can get in uh, again, just with a bit of this, little bit of this work like that. Um, now the windows, we will put them in in just a moment, but before we do that, I think having the actual buildings in um, is going to be important. So, you know, here we go, just put this one in here, there, comes down there, there's even a building here in the background like that, and of course other bits and pieces in front of the building, there's a chimney or something over this side as well, which I'm going to just emphasize more bit of a 3D sort of look, um, an air conditioner, a duct and um, system, something like that here. Top of the roof, there's a few other things. There's another satellite dish here, perhaps another chimney here as well, which I can just put in um, like this, something like that. There's another chimney here as well, which I'll just simplify down. It's further back in the distance. Uh, oops, it actually goes a little bit further up. Let me just emphasize that a bit more. Kind of like this, okay? And, you know, let's have a look. What else can we add on? I mean, it's really just a few bits and pieces here. The building, of, of course, comes all the way down to the ground like that. And, um, you know, the, the edges of these buildings, that's the thing. So there's, there's still a little bit of space there for me to uh, potentially add on another couple of buildings and things over here. I think I might just copy uh, this building, but make it a teeny bit smaller, um, something like this here, and make a little smaller one here on that side, maybe add in a chimney or something um, on that side as well. Okay, and we're gonna just put in the windows, but uh, what the first thing I'm going to do is actually just separate this one out. So we've got one, two, three, sort of three floors. This one's got two, this one's got two, and we'll go two for that one as well. Um, and I'll put in a general indication of the door there. And, uh, you know, there's another one potentially here. Now, this is important because I'm going to actually start um, by putting in some figures a little closer into the foreground. And it's quite early, but it does allow me um, to just gauge the, the relative size of the figures in relation to the, um, 
the doors. So if we don't want to have them, then uh, uh, the figure's too large, okay? But at the same time, these ones are in the foreground. So if we have a figure all the way back there, I know that I'm gonna make that figure a little bit shorter and uh, the head around the same height of that door. So it's just a, a little indication uh, kind of thing. So, you know, we might have some people just walking as well. So, you know, here's one person here, maybe he's got a, got a dog or something like that, walking a dog and, um, you know, another person just maybe just standing like this arm out for whatever reason, okay? And so it's a kind of busy little scene. You know, this person here might have a, uh, let's have a look, could be carrying a sort of stroller or something behind them like this, okay? Just touching the ground. And um, we'll get the leg first coming out there, okay? Something like that. Maybe they're moving towards the camera, just moving this little stroller and um, these figures are gonna let's put this one kind of walking towards and this one's walking away and i do that basically by indicating the hair uh, so let's put some windows in squares let's just get them in one two okay three four couple more here five six Okay, and then we've got, of course, some of these bits and pieces hanging off these like kind of curtains or what have you, hanging off the the buildings. Okay, so a bit more drawing, a bit of detail for that door coming down. There is a window here as well, a window here. I'm going to get another pen out to do some of the detailing for some of this stuff. Okay, this is like another entrance, it looks like, to, to the building. and. Um, again, a couple of windows up the top. One, two, and some washing on a line. Okay, so something like that. A bit of the ta uh, curtain there, and a window here as well. Okay, basic stuff. Another couple of windows up the top here. I'm kind of just copying the structure of these other ones, the general structure, um, and there could be a door here and another window, okay? Similar sort of structure like that, okay? And uh, yeah, maybe we'll try to get in a couple more here as well, just to keep it in line. Fantastic, so that is looking pretty good so far. Um, I mean, I'm not looking for anything too complicated or um, busy in this scene, but uh, some of these little bits and pieces off the top of the roof's good. And I can also start using some other pens to draw in uh, extra details and things like that. I do have these slightly flexible nibbed pens here. Um, I've never quite used these before, but they, yeah, they kind of... Um, yeah, they have a round tip, but the nibs are, are just uh, slightly flexible, which is interesting. Yeah, I'll link these uh, pens in the description if you are interested in getting some of these. They come in a pack of 16, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with them, actually. So, you know, this is, this is interesting. It's kind of, yeah, it's almost like a felt tip. Um, like a rubbery tip, actually, not, not felt, like, uh, yeah. So it's like drawing with a slightly rubbery kind of tip. Um, notice it just doesn't make much sound. You probably can't hear, but it doesn't make much sound on the paper when I sort of scribble onto it. It just, uh, it's very, very quiet. Um, but I can feel that it's got a bit of spring in it as well. So, interesting. Um, we can also use some of these other pens, and I'll show you what I mean. I have this three millimeter pen, four millimeter, sorry, over here, which allows me to get in sort of similar sort of effects for the shutters here, um, like that. Okay, for some areas, and you know, even here, I can get in part of this door, 
like that, okay? And that will just create a, a bit of a contrast here. That's a, a little shade that I've put on top here and cast some shadows and that sort of thing. More of that window and a bit of this window here, the shades of that window, okay? And uh, you're yeah, just going in and adding in some extra bits and pieces. I know this door is pretty dark as well, so I'll just darken that one down. Uh, a few more bits over here as well. You know, let's have a look. We use this pen, which is a kind of a. Oops, where is it? We'll use. Probably one of these other ones. There we go. Interesting. Okay. But I will probably will stick with this uh, four millimeter one actually. It just it's easy to just get in a bit of detail, darker detail, in areas where I need it to be, and we'll kind of go stick with that for consistency. Okay, and we'll do a bit more here, the windows here, and the great thing is that they kind of come in the same size as the windows, the little shutters on the edge, the same shape. So it makes it a lot easier for me to scratch in a few small details in there. Two little directional lines. Like that. Fantastic. And we are ready to paint. So colors, I'm going to go straight into it with the number 10 round brush and we will be using, um, let's go with uh, some granulating colors. I'm going to actually go with a bit of turquoise here for these two buildings. I love this turquoisey sort of color like this and um, just over the, the sides of the building like that. I do have a bit of moon glow as well and uh, purple sort of paint in here which I can just touch into a bit, use it on some areas uh, but really I just want that turquoisey sort of colour running in there uh, cutting around those figures a, a little bit as well like this okay just we're just wanting to put in a really rough sort of colour running through here just that not lovely sort of blue color there um, and then we'll go in with some of the orange i've got actually a bit of carbazole let's have a look at here not carbazole but it's a um quinacridone orange and i'll use it here it's a granulating color also some of that running through that side okay might just change that one up and we'll, we'll make it, uh, let's make, let's get some purple in there, a little bit of carbazole violet running through this uh, house on that end. Which is a non-granulating colour, but it's a very strong sort of uh, violet, which I like. Okay, great. And for the rooftops, I'm just going to use some... Um, yellow ochre mixed with a bit of brown and the brown I'm using is, is called Geoth 
geophyte. Okay, a bit on the top of that building, like this. Here, the chimney. Um, this building here in the far distance is kind of more of a creamy colour. And, you know, a bit of coolness in, in there as well. With that chimney, these two, two bits of chimneys and things running around like that. Okay, this house here on the right could do with a bit of yellow or something in here as well. This will probably turn green. Okay, fantastic. And more of that brown on top like that. Let's drop in some color for the sky. I'm going to... I'm going to go in with uh, just some ultramarine and perhaps a little bit of red. Let's drop that in and let's have a look at how that appears. Good. Um, I do also have a bit of this, um, it's called Imperial Purple. So, drop in some of that into the sky. Mainly just want it to be blue. Like a bluish sort of look though. Fantastic. Okay. Leave that leave that uh, to be and uh, we'll go on further down the page and start putting on some colors for the ground. Uh, really, I'm just gonna be using a little bit of this color, which is, uh, it's basically titanium white, and I might put in some some, some uh, conacridone orange in here, a bit of conacridone. Like this, it's a conacridone gold color. Drop that in there like that. Let it all mix in and create a bit of a bit of fun in there. Uh, the, the front I'm just going to darken down a little bit with some a uh, little bit of blue. I have got some red in there just to create it. Um, make sure that there's still some warmth in this section. Okay, but a little bit of blue would not hurt, especially near the front, so we can sort of bring bring it down a little into the buildings as well. It's it's uh, good if we just put in a little bit of uh, darkness at the base of the buildings just to join that up more uh, with the ground. Okay. The figures, some colors for the figures. I'm going to go with a bit of blue for this one here in the foreground. It's probably going to turn into a violet sort of color. It's just a bit of color for that one like that. And then the figure here to the left Perhaps we go again with some of the turquoise and just straight in like that, just a little turquoise. The other figures, I'm going to go a bit of blue, a bit of yellow, for example. Um, it's not a huge deal. I mean, even if you just use a, a very standard color in here, but keeping in mind that we want to try to um, use complementaries where we can. Okay. Great. We'll leave it to dry just a little bit. I'll put in some red for the faces as well, just for some of these figures like that. Mark out where they are. Some final bits and pieces. We will add in some shadows. And I'm going to be using a large, not a large, but a medium sized round brush. And some neutral tint. Mix up a bit of it here, a bit of a neutral tint. Okay. And um, I can just try, for example, with this figure here in the background, just darkening that, that figure down a little bit, putting some details with the legs here. Same with this other figure, uh, a few of them here in the background. And um, I guess the aim is just to get that shadow underneath them. So 
I always find that getting the legs first and then the shadow after um, certainly helps. Oops. This one here, legs, like that, and then a bit of a shadow underneath. This connecting up, do the same thing for this one. Maybe he's got a bag here or something. Basic figure here, the legs and the buildings, um, of course, have a little shadow in areas, especially underneath the top section here of the buildings. We can see that there is some darkness there, and it sort of carries on to the back of the building. Uh, and, but basically, we do have some of it cutting across even on the on the windows like this. I can imply that there uh, you know another bit here like that kind of joins on there and then joins onto this one here like that and then this one here okay and of course underneath the windows you're probably going to get a little shadow or something as well and on top of that uh, a little bit a little bit uh, cast by this here the shades and all that kind of th there there's a bit of that going on just get a bit of this in as well for the the shutters Bit of darkness underneath this building there underneath the windows birds up here and that's finished if you like this video check out the playlist on the right I release new tutorials and art supply reviews each week to help you progress faster in your watercolor journey